So let's get cracking. I'm going to add three cups of dried rolled oats to my bowl. And in the same bowl, I'm going to add seeds. I've got sunflower seeds and I've got pepita kernels, so pumpkin seeds as well, which make a really lovely crunchiness to this bar. There's going to be some cinnamon in there, so one teaspoon of cinnamon. You can put nutmeg in or allspice or whatever spice you have. Now, to get this all bound nicely, we're going to add three quarters of a cup of honey. Now, I've just softened that honey, so you can see how easy it is to just pour. So just pop the bottle into some boiling water, just let it stand. Or, if you're worried about it sticking to your jug, put boiling water in your jug first, fill it, tip it out, then put the honey in, the honey just falls straight out. So much easier. I've also got some olive oil, so half a cup of olive oil going in there to bind as well. And vanilla. I'm using vanilla extract. It's much better than vanilla essence, which is kind of like a, a science, science class in a bottle when you use essence. You're not quite sure what's in there, but with extract you know what's in there. It's just pure vanilla. It's lovely. So pop a little bit of that in, about a teaspoon of extract. And then to bind all this together, which at the moment is probably not going to happen without the addition of some eggs, we're going to add some eggs to this. So three eggs going in. And I'm going to beat those eggs up a little bit first as well. Make sure you beat them up really well so that when you mix them through the muesli, you're not going to have great big lumps of egg white showing. This is just to bind the ingredients so it moistens them and also helps the muesli bars to set so that they're nice and easy for you to cut up when you're going to sell them. So give this a nice beat. Make sure it's all beaten well and then add that into the same bowl. Very simple, this recipe. Very simple. So take a spoon and then just give that a really good mix and make sure that all the oats and all the seeds are completely covered with moisture, being the oil, the honey and the eggs. So once you get it like so, it smells nice. Oh, you can smell that lovely cinnamon in there. Really beautiful. All right, so easy, right? Five minutes, not even. Take a bowl or a dish around about this size. Um, you'll soon know when you push the muesli into the the dish that it's going to need to be about probably one and a half to two centimetres deep. So you don't want a great big long tray, make it too thin. So try and restrict it to a size around about like the one I'm using here. It's probably around about 30 centimetres by about, uh, probably not even that, probably say 20, 22 centimetres long by about 12 centimetres wide. That's just me guessing. Just push that in. And at the moment it's a bit sloppy, so what we need to do is pop that in the oven for around about 20 to 25 minutes. And the oven temperature needs to be quite low though, so we're only looking at 150 degrees Celsius. We don't really want that to colour, we just want it to set. So the eggs start to set, the coagulation happens around the oats, makes fantastic muesli bars. So I'm just going to pop that in the oven, the oven is preheated to 150 degrees Celsius. So these are out of the oven now. Just a little tip when they're in the oven, just make sure they're not browning too much. You see a little bit around the edges, you can't help that because that's the honey caramelising. But realistically, this should come out almost the same as it goes in. The only difference is that it's set, you can feel it. When it's in the oven though, it's still a little bit soft because it's still warm. You have to make sure that you cool it down. So it's much better to make this early, stick it in the fridge so it can get firm before you cut it. Uh, so the idea is now, I'm going to use a serrated edge knife so that I can cut these muesli bars nice and straight and I can saw down through those seeds as well. Now you can cut these in any sizes you want. It just depends on the, uh, the size that you'd like to give and the price that you'd like to charge for it really. Okay, so look, you can see that this stays together reasonably well and it's like a, my mum used to make these and we used to call them flapjacks in England, a little bit the same. So what I'm gonna do is just pop that on the board. I'm gonna cut that down into two pieces and just pop that on the plate so you can see how delightful they look. I'm going to take one of these little bars and I'm just going to pop that into some wrap paper. Let's take a little bit of the muesli bar out at the end as well if you wish. And you can tie that with a little bit of string which makes it look quite nice as well. So. So a really lovely snack, 
Really good, so very easy. Take five minutes to make, 15, 20 minutes in the oven. Make sure you make them in advance because you need to make them, make sure they set so when you cut them up, you get some nice shapes out of them as well. That one's really easy. Next up, I'm gonna do an apple and sultana muffin, which is guaranteed to be a crowd pleaser. Okay, so now onto our second snack, our healthy snacks. We're going to do some apple and sultana muffins. You're gonna really love this one. It just takes one bowl, mix it up, put it in the oven and everybody's gonna love it. Okay, so let's get on with these muffins. Um, we're going to take uh, 125 grams of melted unsalted butter, just melt it in the microwave or in a small pan. We're also going to add our milk, which is 200 mils of light skim milk, half a cup of raw sugar, Give that a little bit of a mix up first. And one egg. So basically all the wet ingredients go in together with the sugar first. Get that a little bit mixed up. Make almost like a batter this recipe. So add your one extra large egg. The next stage is going to be adding flour. And I do add cinnamon to this too. So I normally put the cinnamon add a couple of spoons of cinnamon. Normally mix it with the flour because I'm going to sieve the flour into this recipe. Sieving not only will get rid of the lumps but it will also aerate this recipe. We are using self-raising flour anyway so we are going to get a nice light muffin. I'm going to add this half at a time. So add half first. Mix. This is where the whisk might come in handy guys. You might find that whisking that in helps you to get a nice lump free batter. Yep. So just gradually. So maybe into two or even in three goes. That way the cinnamon and the flour mix together nicely. So what you should have is a reasonably stiff batter at this stage. All right, now, right at the moment, this is just a base mixture. You could put anything into this mix. Any sort of dried fruit is appropriate, any fruit, anything you like. But today I'm choosing to use apples. Now, apples, Granny Smith apples are better, they're less sugar. Um, if you're going to use a fresh apple, peel it, core it, cut it into quarters, core it and cut it into nice reasonable sized dice and you might need a little bit of lemon juice on it if you're going to do this in advance because otherwise it's going to go brown, which you probably already know. Or make it even easier, you can use canned apples and they're pretty much already mushed up as well. They're supposed to be sliced but in the can you'll notice that they are a little bit broken sometimes, which is great for this recipe. So I'm going to add those. Um, you notice they've been drained so don't put all the liquid in from the can as well and make these muffins too wet. I'm um, just going to add some sultanas and now also this could be changed with dates or even raisins or even dried apricots, whatever you'd like. Pop those in as well. Then I suggest you change implements to stir this through at the end. So just stir that through. So careful not to break up the apple too much because it is a little bit soft. And you can see you've got almost just like a cake mixture here. Which is lovely. So just mix that through, almost like fold it through really at the end. So the self-raising flour will make sure that these muffins are lovely and light. And as you can see, I've got some I made earlier. They're just beautiful. And they're really moist as well. And that's because of the apple that's in them. It keeps its moisture nicely. You can use a variety of uh, little cupcake, little patty moulds. I chose green ones because it matches the apple, you know. I'm all for that. But I've also got these really lovely ones. They are, normally you see these in coffee shops. They look very glamorous. They really are just bits of paper folded up. You could make a fortune if you went into this business. <laughs> you could pop those straight into the um, muffin trays and you don't need to spray them, don't need to line them. So it makes it so much easier. It helps with the washing up as well. You can buy brown ones and you can also buy white. But if all else fails, how about just using the good old fashioned little cupcake cups, just like so. I'll do a couple like that just so you can see the difference. All right, now, when you're going to use this um, mix, I would suggest two spoons. And I would suggest going quite slowly because especially if you get the mixture up on the top of those muffin patty cases. So just take a spoon of the mix, drop it in over the centre and then it allows you to do that so that you don't spill the muffin mix anywhere else. So spoon it off the other spoon, much easier. I'll show you in one of these shallow ones so you can see what I'm saying. That way, and that way you can control it more when it goes in. So two good spoonfuls in each one. So that's a good uh, portion control as well as a help to get it into the dish. And what we're going to do is just make the tops a little bit crunchy. We're going to add a little bit of raw sugar, a little bit of cinnamon, and also I thought might put some oats on the top. It makes it look really earthy, gives us another um, nu nutrient in this dish as well, but also helps to make it crunchy on the top. We all love the tops of muffins. There's a television series on about people buying just muffin tops because no one's really interested in the bottom, they just like the top. So we're going to make the top really, really crunchy and very decadent. 
being healthy at the same time. Okay, now this mixture that I've given you here, this recipe, will make you 12 decent sized apple and sultana muffins. Just while you're finishing off your little moulds here, just be mindful that you need to preheat your oven to around about 190 degrees Celsius. These need to go into a warmed oven and they take around about 15 to 20 minutes to cook. Oats on the top. You don't have to do this, you can just leave them as they are, but it does make it a little bit crunchier and gives a little bit more interest. They look nice as well. A little bit of brown sugar, or not brown sugar, I mean raw sugar, I should say. And likewise, you don't have to do this, I just like to do it. And I'm just going to grab a little bit of cinnamon and just dust the tops with cinnamon as well. Beautiful. So you can't complain about the amount of work going into this one. It's like five minutes. It's one bowl. Yes, it's a whisk and a spoon, but that's it. You even don't have to wash up these muffin tins. You can just wipe them out. They're fine. So easy and healthy and beautiful at the same time. So I'm going to pop those in the oven and I'll be back soon. Okay, so we've got our lovely muffins out of the oven. They smell glorious. They're so nice. Who can resist a hot cake or muffin out of the oven? Um, now, just to make sure that they are cooked and give you a couple of little pointers, first thing to do is just press the centre of the cake and make sure it springs back up to the touch. So, in other words, the mi mixture in the centre of the cake is not still wet. If it was, your thumb would stay down, the thumbprint would stay down in the cake, it would still be wet inside, which is not good. Another thing you can do is take one out of the tray and with the skewer, a wooden skewer if you can, just pop that into the, the cake or the muffin and remove it and it should be reasonably clean. If it's covered in wet, soggy mixture, chances are the cakes and muffins are still wet inside, which is what we want to try and avoid. So once you're happy that they're cooked, they're coloured nicely, not too dark, so around about 15 to 20 minutes, pop them onto a rack, because the reason we use the rack is that we want to make sure that the air is circulating underneath. If we leave them in the muffin trays, then they're going to get a little bit soggy, a little bit damp, a bit of condensation, so that's a good tip. Beautiful. So there's our apple and sultana muffins ready to eat, looking great and a nice healthy snack for your 